why is this farm like no other on earth? What is drastically shortening post-operative convalescences? How does a plastic bag help? Of what significant facts is this flare a symbol? Industry on Parade, a brand new look at our American film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. A farm near Newville, Pennsylvania, which is unique in all the world. And here's what makes it unique, electricity. This farm owned a man named John Stamey uses more electrical appliances, perhaps, than any three other farms. Milk is the chief product of the 400-acre establishment, milk from a herd of well over 300 head of cattle. And all these cows are tended, their feed prepared, the milking and cleaning up accomplished by just three men. With a big assist, of course, from some of those dozens of electrical appliances we mentioned. Needless to say, milking is handled by vacuum milkers powered by an electric motor. The milk is drawn gently into the cups, then directly into a system of glass pipes and away to a cooling tank in another room. No pails to be kicked over, no dust to settle into the milk, and the number of cows one man can attend to is increased many fold. An important factor affecting the price we consumers pay for our dairy products. Electric refrigeration cools the milk 45 degrees in 15 minutes. Now let's look at some of the other features of this novel farm. Latest hand and power tools lighten every farm chore, from welding an axle to constructing a birdhouse. You'll notice too how well lighted the buildings are. Our cameraman filmed these scenes with nothing more than existing light. How about this? An intercom system connecting all the buildings. Or this, the latest in fire detection equipment. A test shows that circuits are operating and that heat detectors spotted in the various buildings are ready to give both an audible and a visual alarm in the event of fire. The Edwards Company equipment not only detects a fire but tells where it is. The electrical industry and the magazine Farm Journal have taken the stamies to their hearts and have cooperated in making the house as well as the rest of the farm a true show place a demonstration of how electricity can make life easier and more enjoyable. Mrs. Stamey pasteurizes the milk the family itself consumes. She also does the laundry, of course, and washing, drying, and ironing are all done in this utility room in a fraction of the time those jobs required of her mother. A lot of families have added appliances like these to their homes, but not all of them have done what the Stamies have, installed adequate wiring to carry the increased load. Houses more than 15 or 20 years old generally were not wired for electric stoves or automatic dishwashers. Imagine how many hours a week this appliance saves for Mary Stamey. The kitchen is lighted so that Mary never throws her own shadow on her work. All uniform, no bright spots or dark corners. No mystery either about when lunch or dinner should be served. She keeps informed via the intercom. With the help of an upright deep freeze unit, the Stamies eat the fresh or frozen produce of their own farm the year round. In addition to the deep freeze, there's the regular refrigerator, of ample size to hold a week's supply of perishables. An electric mixer? To be sure, several kinds. And electric ice cream maker, coffee maker, toaster, hair dryer, broiler, garbage disposer, and heaven knows what all. In the living room, a television set that brings this isolated farm family as close as any other family to events in New York, Washington, Hollywood, and the rest of the world. Don't think farming has suddenly been transformed into a life of leisure. Dad still has to get up at four in the morning. But electricity has helped make it much easier, more remunerative, and far more satisfying a way of life.
Nearly every American family can now afford an automobile, a radio and television set, a refrigerator and washing machine. Because of American managerial experience and know-how, improved machines and techniques, plus the millions of skilled men and women on the production lines in the nation's plants and factories, all of us have come to consider yesterday's luxuries as today's necessities, and our industrial progress continues. Each year, American industry spends two and a half billion dollars on research to improve current products or to invent new ones. A patient who has just undergone serious surgery is wheeled out of the operating room. As he rolls along to his own room, there pours into his veins from a suspended bottle a life-saving fluid that will go a long way toward preventing complications. It might be a solution to replace lost fluids, or one to hold down fever, or one to prevent shock. In any case, it will almost certainly increase his chances for speedy recovery. How long do you think it will be before the patient can have a meal? The answer is, he can and should and will have one immediately to further build up his strength as rapidly as possible. The first meal is not likely to include orange juice or beefsteak, although actually that's what he is getting in effect in a liquid intravenous diet containing plenty of proteins and vitamin A. His liquid diet and the equipment for administering it are manufactured in pharmaceutical plants like that of Abbott Laboratories in North Chicago. Here the chemical ingredients for hundreds of different products are prepared in mass quantities but with all the careful attention to purity and proportion demonstrated by a neighborhood druggist. In supplying nutrition intravenously, it's not a matter of preparing a nice, clear soup or extract. Something like that would kill a patient. Solutions to be fed directly into the bloodstream are quite different from food taken through the mouth and must be as pure as it's humanly possible to make them. Mere sterility isn't enough. That means only that all bacteria have been killed in this kind of work, you've also got to get rid of the bacteria's carcasses, known as pyrogens, for pyrogens, dead bacteria, can still cause fever. Samples from each batch go through careful chemical analysis. After the solution has passed through a bank of filters, it goes into bottles that have been washed in a hot detergent, then rinsed no less than eight times. The last rinse in water that's been filtered and distilled. Even so, every bottle must go into an autoclave for final sterilization by steam. And even now, the tests are not ended. There's visual inspection, injections into the ears of rabbits, test tube incubation. The batch from which each sample comes is held under lock and key until the sample gets a clean bill of health from all the tests. This particular test is for acidity. A lot of work, a lot of professional attention, but all of it has contributed to the confidence we hold in our pharmaceutical manufacturers. And last but not least among the benefits is the fact that since the development of effective intravenous feeding, convalescences have been reduced 30 to 300 percent. At Hunter Packing Company in East St. Louis, Illinois, a new method of packaging meat products for better storage, shipment, and display. Put them in a polyethylene plastic bag, empty out the air by means of vacuum, seal off the end, trim the excess plastic, and the products, in this case hams, are ready for quick submersion in a hot bath, which causes the shrinkable polyethylene to contract into a snug, form-fitting package. After which, labels are applied, and the hams are ready for shipment. Across the river, at the Central States Paper and Bag Company plant in St. Louis, we learn that it isn't even necessary to apply the labels. They can be printed directly onto the polyethylene in as many as six colors. Here, a new roll of the plastic in tubular form is spliced onto the end of a roll already running through the printing press.
By the time the polyethylene reaches the take-up roll, making the trip at a couple of hundred feet a minute, the chemical and abrasion-resistant ink is completely dry. Now the tubing can be heat-sealed into airtight sections, which simultaneously will be cut apart to become airtight bags. This is done on a machine guided by an electric eye that watches the printing and stops the tubing at just the right point so that the label will be in its proper place on the bag. Periodic tests must prove the heat seal seams to be so strong that the bag will burst before they give way. And thus are produced the remarkable packages that are bringing us more and more of our favorite meats, poultry, fruits, vegetables, and other produce at peaks of freshness and tastiness never before possible except under much more expensive methods of packaging, shipment, and storage. In America, the capital that has always been used to start new businesses has come from people, individuals who have saved a part of their income and who have invested it in some kind of a business enterprise. They invested their savings in order to have a future income out of what their savings could produce for them. These people risked their money in new enterprises in the hope of reward, the hope of a profit. These are the investments which purchase the improved plants, the new tools and machines that create jobs, increase production, and raise our living standards. Tulsa, Oklahoma, one of the important oil capitals of the world refineries all over the place, and yet look how clean it is. This cleanliness results in large part from the petroleum industry's campaign against air pollution. And from the Tulsa plant of John Zink Company come many of the instruments that have made that campaign so effective. For example, these men are assembling something called a smokeless field flare burner. In refining petroleum, certain gases are produced. Ordinarily, they're put to good use, but occasionally an interruption of the refining process means that, for the sake of safety, they must be temporarily disposed of. That's the job of this piece of equipment. Atop a tower...